Hi, this is Ömer Faruk Gülban. I am an employee of Brain Innovation doing research and software development using MRI data. In this project, we have investigated a new contrast that is derived from the phase images. Unlike magnitude images, even simple averaging is difficult with phase images because of the circular nature of phase values. In our research that uses mesoscopic imaging at 70, we need to average multiple acquisitions to increase SNR. Therefore, being unable to average straightforwardly together with the lack of natural zero point is a critical constraint for working with phase images. To address this problem, we propose to operate on the magnitude of the second spatial derivative of phase images. And we coined the term phase jolt to describe these images and this contrast. Below, you are seeing the phase image acquired at three different echo times. Before we describe what actually is phase jump and phase jolt, we would like to give you a visual intuition first. On the left side, you see our magnitude image that is acquired at 8 milliseconds echo time. This is coming from a 0.35 mm isotropic multi-echo GRE acquisition. On the second panel, you see the same slice, but it's phase image. And of course, the wraps are visible. When we compute the magnitude of the first derivative, we call it the phase jump. If we compute the magnitude of the second derivative, we call it phase jolt. Qualitatively, when comparing phase, phase jump and phase jolt images, you can see that susceptibility affected areas appear brighter in phase jump images. Whereas this is not the case when you take the magnitude of the second spatial derivative. This issue can be seen even more visible in the later echo times. Here you see 16 milliseconds. This susceptibility artifact affected area becomes even brighter. And in the later echo time, that is 24 milliseconds, the issue is visible even stronger. Whereas in phase jolt image compared to phase jump and phase images, there is a general homogeneous appearance in the image. An important advantage of working with the magnitude of the first or second spatial derivatives of the phase data, named the phase jump and phase jolt, is as follows. Especially in low SNR regime, where multiple runs are needed to boost the SNR of magnitude images, doing the same is challenging for phase images because of the circular nature of the data. Here in this example on the upper panel, you can see that two different runs of the same acquisition can give drastically different phase images. Although it is not impossible to unwrap these images correctly and eventually average them, practically this is very hard to achieve and can be time consuming. Whereas if we move on to the first or second spatial derivative of the phase, it is much more straightforward to deal with multi-run averaging when you operate on the magnitude of the first or second spatial derivative of the phase images. This is possible because while taking the spatial derivative of the phase image, the circular differences of the phase values that is between 0 to 2 pi is accounted for in the voxel-wise circular difference calculation. In another way, Phase jolt or phase jump images are automatically phase unwrapped. Although it should be noted that it is not the same as phase unwrapping the zeroth order measurement. This is a derived measurement that is being used here. As a result of this, one can straightforwardly average multiple runs and get a single average and high SNR phase jolt image. Due to the nature of the computation, there is a natural minimum and maximum point in phase jolt images. The minimum point is 0 and the maximum point is pi. However, note that we have chose to visualize the phase jolt image using the maximum as half pi. Briefly, going a bit more in detail on what exactly phase jump and jolt is, one can imagine the following. Think of the MRI signal in a voxel-wise scenario and imagine the complex components of the signal after doing the Fourier transform. When you think of a set of voxels in the same area, you can imagine that in a high signal regime and if you are in the same tissue, you will have high magnitude in the complex domain and not so much dispersion in the phase values. However, if you are in a low SNR regime like air voxels, 
you will have low magnitude and as a result you will also have a high dispersion of phase values so thinking of this phase jump and phase jolt measurements are basically pairwise circular differences between these set of voxels for instance here nine voxels we can say in a 2d example and by taking the pairwise circular differences and computing the magnitude of these differences one can summarize the average phase changes we had more detailed explanation of this operation in our abstract and you are invited to read the methods section a qualitative look in details revealed that there are interesting tissue contrasts to be observed for instance here on the left hand side we are visualizing the magnitude image of our t2 starvated image minimum intensity projected over around three millimeters where you can see the nice and fine details of the white matter vasculature in the phase jump and phase jolt images similar vascular appearances are visible so one detail that should be noticed is again the effect of the susceptibility artifacts which are more visible in phase jump that is the first spatial derivative compared to the phase jolt that is the second spatial derivative magnitude moving on to lower areas where we see more clearly the susceptibility artifacts you can see that phase jolt computation gives a much again homogeneous appearance that can be advantageous to detect the vascular shapes there also notice the subcortical contrast that is available and going into a more inferior area where susceptibility artifacts are even stronger the difference between the phase jump and phase jolt compared to the magnitude image can be further appreciated especially looking at the vascular details available within this red circle zooming into the subcortex and looking at the tissue details it can be seen that the inhomogeneities appearing around vessels in the phase jump image is mostly gone in the phase jolt images also some fine details of the subcortical structures can be visible here we show a zoomed in look at the vascular details in the white matter where the vascular details can be appreciated in the phase jump and jolt images however it should be highlighted that because computing phase jump and phase jolt requires spatially integrating multiple voxels this operation results in spatial blurring for instance here you can see that there is a almost a single voxel thick vessel penetrating into the gray matter however this detail is less visible in the phase jump and phase jolt images therefore for looking at very small details available at the resolution level computing phase jump and phase jolt might not be the best solution future directions of this work involve looking at the phase jolt contrast in fmri setting we have already observed very strong task related responses that can be derived by computing phase jolt fmri time series we are still testing multiple data sets to quantify how big these differences and responses are but it is somewhat exciting to see that strong task responses can be straightforwardly computed in purely phase data. In the image here, you can see the functional activity of the visual cortex derived by magnitude bold image and the phase jolt contrast that is computed purely on the phase data. With that, thank you for listening.